and welcome to this short video which looks at the best way for you to pay yourself as a director from your limited company in 2014-2015. My name is Stuart Ramsey, I'm the Managing Director of Accountancy Extra and I'm passionate about helping small business owners improve their profits, pay less tax, have more fun and build the businesses and the lifestyles that they aspire to. If you've got any questions about the uh, issues raised in this video, please feel free to give me a ring on 01422 365 981 or email me stuart at accountancyextra.co.uk and I'll more than happily answer any questions you've got about how to get paid from your limited company in 2014-2015. So, each year, the Chancellor sets an amount of money that you can earn from any source without paying any tax. And for 2014-15, the Chancellor has set that limit at £10,000. That means you can earn £10,000 from whatever source you like and pay absolutely no tax whatsoever on it. Now, it's worth bearing in mind that that uh, allowance covers one person. You only get one allowance per person per year and that's to cover all your types of income uh, that you've got. So that includes your salary, self-employment income, pension income, all the types of income that are covered by that one allowance. It's not one allowance per type of income, it's one allowance per person. Now, in previous years, it's been really easy to advise directors on how much money they should take out as a salary from their limited company. However, two interesting things have happened this year uh, which make it a little bit more complicated than it has been in the past. The first one is that whilst the personal tax threshold has been increased to £10,000, the national insurance threshold still sits at £7,956. That means that if you earn between £7,956 and £10,000, you will pay national insurance on the £2,044 difference, but you won't pay any tax. The second one is the recent introduction of the employer's national insurance allowance of up to £2,000. What that is, is that employers can now employ somebody in the first £2,000 of employer's NIC that they would have paid, uh, they don't have to anymore. So that makes our planning a little bit more complicated because we're always looking to bring that allowance into play to maximise its use. So let's take a look at what would happen if we paid a salary up to the £10,000 personal allowance limit. Well that works out at a salary of £833 per month. And at that level, we wouldn't pay any income tax at all. But we would pay £245.28p in employees' national insurance each year. And we'd also pay a further £282.12 in employers' national insurance every single year. However, with the introduction of the £2,000 employers' national insurance allowance, the £282.12p of employers' NI that we would have paid, we no longer have to. So now we've got a situation where we can take £833 salary, but have deducted from that the £245.28 pence per year in employees' national insurance. So, is this method of drawing money out of the business any good? Well, the simple answer is yes, but it's only good if you're in certain circumstances. And those certain circumstances are you have no other sources of income other than the salary that you're taking from your limited company. So if you have a little sole trader business on the side, or you have some pension income, or you have another job, or anything like that, this method is probably not the right method for you. You also need to be able to guarantee that you won't exceed the basic rate tax threshold. And we'll talk a little bit in a couple of minutes about what the basic rate tax threshold is and how that affects you. Um, but what we've found with our calculations is that if you exceed that basic rate tax threshold, you're actually slightly worse off taking a full £10,000 salary. It's good if you don't employ anybody apart from um, yourself. And the simple reason for that is that if you're employing anybody, you're using some of that allowance on their salary. Um, if you then move the employer's allowance across to your salary, um, you're not actually gaining any benefit at all from, um, from, from that allowance. And the final reason that you might use this um, is 
if you can remember that you're going to have an additional pay bill from HMRC that you're going to have to pay on time, that National Insurance Bill of £245. Um, if you don't pay it on time, HMRC will um, send you penalties and fines. And if you, um, if you went down that route, you might find that the fines and penalties far outweigh the benefit of using it. So if you're going to use that route, please be aware that you've got an additional National Insurance Bill to pay. So is there an alternative? Well, there is. There's a second option. If you're unsure whether you're going to exceed that uh, basic rate or higher rate tax allowance or whether you might have some other income coming to you during the year, you could pay yourself a salary of £7,956 a year, which is the uh, national insurance threshold. So at that level, you're not going to pay any tax, nor are you going to pay any national insurance at all. Uh, and that 7,956 equates to a monthly salary of £663 per month. Now, as you're going through the year uh, and you get towards the end of the year, you might find that actually you did qualify for taking that bigger salary out of the company. Well, that's not a problem because what you can do is then pay yourself a bonus of £2,044 in March 2015, which will then take your salary up to the £10,000 level and fully utilise the um, allowance that was available to you. Um, but you can do that as a one-off payment in March once you know exactly how your uh, personal circumstances and your income are shaping up for the year. Now it's worth talking at this point, um, I get asked questions about um, state benefits and other bits and pieces, so it's worth, worth pointing out at this point that on either of these salary levels you get the credits towards your state pension etc. Um, you always have to operate a pay UIE scheme and you have to compl uh, um, comply with the HMRC's um, real-time um, returns, RTI. Um, of course, if we're doing your payroll for you, um, we take care of that. You won't pay any personal tax at either of those levels of salary. Uh, both are still very tax-efficient ways of getting paid. So given that they're both tax-efficient ways of getting paid, why wouldn't you just stick with taking the uh, £663 a month out of the company and not worry about taking the extra 2044 a year out? Because it, it, um, that way you'd have no hassle, you'd have no extra bills and them, no complications and nothing to think about. Well, the simple reason that we recommend that both alternatives are there are if you took that extra 2044 in salary, uh, which takes you up to the 10000 limit, you will get 20% corporation tax relief on that which would save you £408 in the year. At that level, we've already seen that you pay £245 in employees' national insurance, so effectively you would save £163 by fully utilising the £10,000 allowance, if you meet all the qualification criteria. Now that's £163 per director, so if you've got a two-director limited company with no employees, both of uh, the directors are only taking out basic rate, um, salary and dividends, that could be a saving of £326, which is quite important, it's quite a significant saving to have. So what about the dividends, the other part of the remuneration equation? Well, each year you're allowed to earn so much money before you get into the higher rate tax threshold. And this year, that amount is £41,865. And that 41865 includes both your salary and your dividends. So let's look at what um, would happen if we were to pay um, salary at either of those levels. Well, the higher rate earnings threshold is that 31865 which is the 41865 less the 10000 So if we're paying the 10000 salary, we'd have 31865 less for dividends. Now, as you know, dividends are subject to something called a tax credit. So we have to multiply that figure by 90 and divide by 100 to get to the figure that you can actually take out in cash, which is £28,678.50p in dividend if you take a £10,000 salary. However, if you took the lower salary of 7956 you'd have the 31865 allowance plus you've also got an extra 2044 that you haven't used from the personal allowance giving you a total of 33,909 that you could use. Applying the tax credits to the dividends again gives you a cash dividend of £30,518 that you could take out without paying any tax or NI on that dividend. So which method should you choose? Well, the answer is it all depends. 
And our view is we can't always see into the future. So there's a lot of uncertainty about will you get extra work, will you get extra income, could you exceed that basic rate the threshold. So our general advice would probably be to go with option two, take the lower salary at 663 a month and then top up with the 2044 extra bonus in March. However, there is absolutely no substitute for bespoke, accurate and fully tailored tax planning around your particular circumstances. So any of our clients who want to have their individual circumstances reviewed, if they want to drop me a line, they're more than uh, we'll go through their personal circumstances and we'll make sure that the plan for them, for their salary and uh, remuneration and dividends, is tailored exactly to their needs. Also, if anybody else who's watched this video would like to uh, drop me a line and, ha and uh, inquire about their particular circumstances and what's best for them, I'd be more than happy to take your call on 01422 365981 or answer any email queries you've got at stuartaccountancyextra.co.uk. Thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you again soon on a future video.